Hey there friends, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are all doing well. For today's project, I have a bit of an untraditional kind of memory keeping system and it was inspired by another project that just didn't work out exactly as I had hoped. I had picked up this coupon organizer from the Dollar Tree with the intentions of altering it and making it more funner and that I could include all of the pattern papers that I wanted to use. And the more I considered how I could finish it, I realized it was going to be much more work than would be worth it if I did this rather than just starting and making my own base. So that's what we're going to do today. We're creating this accordion style holder and it has a beautiful window accent and I have it filled with these A2 size cards. They fit in here perfectly and you can use these to finish as you would a traditional mini album by including your pictures and memories. And then I was also able to incorporate my new printable. This is the coffee and books images and so I really wanted to incorporate some of these beautiful coordinating colors and trims. So I'm going to do that. If you are interested in this as just a base for another project. I think it's very versatile and you'll be able to finish this with just about any collection or theme that you have in mind. So if that sounds good to you, then stick with me and we'll make it together. Okay, we're gonna start on that base first and however tempting it is to jump right to that pattern paper, I am going to suggest that you make sure to use a layer of thick, colorful cardstock for two reasons. First, you do want it to be very sturdy and that added layer is going to really bulk up the thickness. And secondly, there's a lot of score lines here, so you don't want to uh, risk having the core of the paper show if it cracks. So I'm just picking this black cardstock at 65 pound weight and it's going to coordinate with my pattern paper. And so my first piece is six and a half inches high by 12 inches wide. Now originally I had planned to make mine seven and a half inches and so I did kind of come up with this little prototype just to see how my measurements were and I decided that it was much too long or wide for the project that I wanted to put inside of it and then also it did create a window that I thought could become a problem because it was so large so I just went back and revised my numbers so now it's going to be six and a half inches wide but it will still be the same height and the same depth so the first thing I did after cutting my cardstock was come in with my score line, the first one at four and a half, the second one at five and a quarter, the third one at nine and three quarters, and then the last one at ten and a half. So when I fold on those score lines, I'm going to get a finished measurement of four and a half by six and a half, and it'll be three quarters of an inch deep. So I think if you wanted to increase the depth of this, you would have to add two pieces of paper together. This was the largest I could get from just one single sheet. And so this is gonna be what wraps around and creates the actual base. And then you're gonna to want to also have these accordion pieces and they are cut from that same black cardstock. They are four and a half inches high because they're going to be the full distance from the top to the bottom. And then it was six inches wide when I started and I scored it at every half an inch. So when I put my accordion together, I also put my tape on the outside where it will contact the edge of the base. So I have two of those, one for each side. And then I've also got my pattern paper cut to work with right away. And normally I would assemble the base and then add the pattern paper layers to it. But it will be so much easier to do all of this while you can get it flat on your work surface. So let's go ahead and do that. This is the paper that I picked to coordinate with that printable. And it's just a very nice, subtle Swiss dot. I have this cut to be four and three eighths 
by six and three eighths. So I'm going to get that nice border of that cardstock showing all the way around. And I'm going to put a piece in the back. Normally I would not worry about that, but since we have that window, it will show when we take out the cards. So let's just go ahead and make that look nice as well. So I want to do all of this surface is covered with the exception of this top flap portion and then this portion as well. This is where we're going to cut our window. So let's go ahead and cover the back. And I'm just using up a quantity of the same pattern. I had a lot of it to go through. So I decided that I would just cover all of the surfaces with the same pattern. You don't have to do that. You could mix and match as long as you come up with a combination that you like. So now let's go ahead and cover the inside of this flap. And what I wanna do, you see how on my pattern paper, I have rounded that corner and it's just not necessary, but is a nice detail to add. So I'm gonna bring in this corner rounder and just nip off those corners. I would really love to have the one from We Are Memory Keepers because after a while, this one does hurt my hand, but I don't use it often enough to make a investment in a new tool. So now I want to cover the inside of this flap and I'm gonna continue working with that same pretty pattern paper. So this piece is one and three eighths by six and three eighths. And remember I did go ahead and cut those corners off so that it was rounded and definitely want to finish the inside of this flap as well because it will be much nicer and more sturdy this way. So now I want to cover the inside of this spine. This is a tricky little piece and this is the one that I appreciate most being able to adhere on the flat surface. So this one is five eighths of an inch by six and three eighths. And we're gonna continue to keep that border showing all the way around. And that will also ensure that we don't inadvertently adhere this to a place where it would affect that fold. So I wanna do the top here as well. There really aren't too many measurements for this base which makes it nice. And I don't think this scoring and folding is complicated either. So now we have the top portion covered. Let's go ahead and do the bottom before we move on to the next step, which is going to be our window. Now you don't need the window. I just wanted a little bit extra detail. Um, and I thought it would be fun for different ways you could fill it and things would show from the inside. So I've got my, so I've got my base here and I've also created just a little template. I revised my measurement from my prototype and decided a little bit smaller of a window would work better for it to be more stable. And so I have just cut this to be three by six. Now you would want to adjust that if you decided to make a different size width, but I do want to come in with my T-square ruler. I'm just not the girl who's going to measure everything perfectly. I don't have the patience for that. So I'm going to guesstimate from the left to the right, where it's pretty much the middle. And then I'll hold that in place and bring my T-square ruler up to it so that I know I have it well uh, lined up from the edge. I think that my pencil will show up best on this black cardstock. So I'm just tracing around that and I want to come in with a craft knife. Now I took my craft knife apart and I added a new blade just so that I would get a good sharp edge on that. And so I want to cover my work surface here with some thicker cardstock or this is actually the back of a paper pad so that I don't inadvertently cut through onto my work surface. So now I want to bring in my ruler and I'm just going to 
cut obviously out the center being careful not to overlap the edges so maybe I'm gonna stand up and hopefully everything will stay in focus I want to see right over the top better to go slow and take your time get it very close and if you need to come back in with your scissor just to connect those edges and that would be a good idea to finish up that cut I'm just gonna continue to work around now like I mentioned you really don't need to do this step and it will be faster and easier if you don't but I just thought in my original plan that it would be nice for the contents of this to show so that's what I'm gonna do just running straight along and I am not a perfectionist so this is not even going to be sort of close but I will be hiding any imperfections with some flowers and trim so I'm really not worried about that at all so I would come back in now and just get right into those corners and make sure that that window is fully cut out and so now I want to flip this over and I want to include a, another row of my double-sided tape here because I want this to be well secured all the way up to the edge of that window. So let's just go ahead and add that now. I have already added my adhesive to the pattern cardstock, so that will be a nice double layer of that tape this will be well secured on the front and then now I've got that done I can just remove the backing here and then add my last large pattern paper layer to that and now all of the outside surfaces with the exception of that flap are covered. Let's turn this back around and now we can just follow that line where we already cut and because we put that extra adhesive in the middle it will be well secured. Okay so now I've got my window cut out and as I mentioned before this is a paper that is not a solid core on the pattern so I'm going to have to come back in and ink my edge just so that I don't have that white core showing up next to the black cardstock and this will probably be difficult for some of my fellow colorists to see but I thought the easiest way to do that would be to come in with my Copic marker and just go ahead and mark that around the inside with the wider edge so please do not come for me in the comments if I am uh, using my Copic marker the wrong way I know I am but it's just the easiest way to do this and I want to make sure that this is a nicer more finished looking edge so I'm coming along all the way around and then I'll just get into that corner as carefully as I can and this will help to finish that edge so you would probably want to either use your marker or come in with an inker so that you could finish off this edge like a distress ink would work great probably want to give this a couple of seconds to dry before you move on to adding your plastic window and I'll just go ahead and wait and then I'll come back in when it's ready and then we'll continue on with this window okay so now that ink has dried and I've come in with a piece of acrylic here and I've just cut it so that it will extend beyond that window and I'm gonna glue this with my Tombow that's the best way to adhere a non-porous material so I'll just run a line of that around I didn't get too close to the edge so that if it scooged out it wouldn't go and be uh, visible in that window so I'll just drop this into place and then this is another good time to wait 
for the glue to set up. So I'll just go ahead and press this in now, and then we can move on to the next step. So once we get our base done, then we get to move on to the fun part, which is filling it. And it just so happens that I chose the measurements for the outside to fit perfectly the A2 size cards. And I think it would be nice to have them as a fold going toward the left so that you can have a two page layout to finish when you are adding all the fun stuff to your book. So I've got my base of cardstock. It's four and a quarter by 11 and scored at five and a half. And then I'm just gonna come in and finish it with my pattern papers. So of course I'm still working with that dot and you could really go through some stash papers with this because you will have room for many of these cards inside that holder and so you can decide how much or as little as you want to fill it so the pattern paper for this piece is four and eight by five and three eighths and you can decide how layered you want it I decided to add just one layering pattern for this and then I'm gonna finish the inside in the back as well so for my purpose I want to use that printable and I chose my papers to go according to what would coordinate with that but if you were thinking about using this in a different way, I would say this would be really nice if you have a new baby in your family and you want to create a uh, project that would have a picture for every month of the first year. You could make these and put the pictures inside and on the back as well so that by the end of the year, you could take all of your pictures and fill this up and it would be such a sweet way to capture those memories. You could also use this for a recipe holder. I think that would be really fun as well. And here is where you can decide how little or as full as you want it. I've got my printable here and I did want to fill in a little bit of that space. So it's going to be three quarters of an inch deep and that allows me to include some layers that are up on a foam spacer. So I'm just going to include that right here in the middle. I did finish the edge of this with another marker. Please don't come for me in the comments. I know that's not how you're supposed to use your Copics, but I did want it to have a nice finished edge. So we have one here now that it's finished and then I have created the other ones to fill that using the rest of the printables from that collage sheet. So this is going to be a perfect way to fill this. I think how nice it would be to create one of these for Christmas or for a special trip that you're going on. Now we can come back to our base and we've got our window installed here and all of the pattern papers around the outside that we can. Now we want to add those accordion pieces. And this is where you definitely need to be thinking about the two glue combo that I always mentioned. You want this piece to be very well secured because it will be moving and holding all of this together. So let's just go ahead and pull one side only so that we don't inadvertently adhere this to the other side before we're ready. And so here is my double-sided adhesive and my wet adhesive. I'm putting this in a little from the edge again, just so that it doesn't accidentally squeeze out. I think it is much more noticeable on the darker card stacks. So let's fold this up now so that I can judge exactly where my corner is and add that to the base right exactly on the corner and right exactly on the score line on the bottom and press that into place until you have a good contact that double-sided adhesive will help you to hold that while the glue sets up. So let's just go ahead and repeat that process for this side as well. And I'm keeping that first score line toward the outside so that the 
accordion will function properly. And here is definitely where you would notice cracking if you went right in with the pattern paper instead of starting with the card stack. So here is our second piece. And I'm just repeating that same process and being very careful to keep it exactly on the edge there and press that into place. Now we're going to squish all these little bits in and flip that over. I'll remove the backing from this tape now. And then holding all these pieces together is probably where I'm mostly prone to getting the adhesive on myself. But just be careful and take your time for this portion. Hold it up so that you get it exactly into that corner and then work it on the way down. And then go ahead and press that. You can get your thumb in there so that you get a good contact. And then just repeat that process for this side as well. Because I am right-handed, this is a little bit more tricky for me to get it in the corner, but I'm just gonna take my time. That wet adhesive will stay wet long enough for you to get this positioned exactly into the right space and then make sure you have a good contact okay so now you've got the outside done and this is the perfect time to come in with your trim before the flowers because you want to make sure to leave yourself enough space so we're going to capture the ribbon in between the base and the pattern paper just like we do when we make a mini album and I picked this really pretty check from really reasonable ribbon this ties a lovely bow and it won't fray after you cut it at an angle so I'm just going to temporarily set this in place and determine how much I want to tie my bow and then I'll just clip that we can fine-tune this measurement after we get everything added. So I'm going to measure this so that I can get my bow a little bit further down. It would be here. So let's take our hot glue and set that in to tack that into place and then we'll cover this with that last piece of the pattern paper it will be easier I think to see it from this angle so let's just finish that last end of the flap now we know the approximate location of where our bow is going to be. I want to add my flowers here now. This is pretty flexible as it is, so I want to add a little block of something under here so that when I add my gluing elements to it, I'm not going to push it down too far. I decided that for some reason the largest flowers I could find in my stash would be the best for this. I'm not exactly sure why, um, but I think that it coordinates beautifully with this pretty pattern on that dot. And so I've got one really large flower and I'm keeping in mind where my bow is gonna be. So I can bring in a couple of additional flowers here and then my leaves will also be tucked in pretty close just so that there's room. I don't have as much space 
for as many of the trim layers on this as I would like, but I think I can make up for that with that larger focal flower. This, because I have that wood black in there, I'm able to really press on that. So when I have that large flower in place, I think my best bet for my leaves is going to be right here. I'm just going to tack these together. Now I can see once I have that flap over that that flower is just a little bit too high. So I'm going to go ahead and carefully renew that and lower it so that it doesn't become caught when I close up the flap on the top. It's about as low as I'm going to be able to get that. And still have all of my layers showing. So here is that large flower in the center and I'm going to put my leaves like right here so that they don't become damaged when they are closed up with the lid. Now that last flower going into place and pushing down on that so that it will set well into that glue. This is kind of heavy, even though we're not using as many of the finishing details. So I definitely want to stick with my hot glue for that. So here is that corner all decorated nicely with our flower arrangement, we can go ahead and put the inserts in. Now, like I mentioned, you're going to see through that window. So whatever you put on the top is going to be what shows. So if you're doing a Halloween or a Christmas, you could put your favorite image there and that will be what shows uh, through the window. So close that up. You see how well all of those cards fit in there just perfectly right along the edge. I don't know if that will stay in focus, but it's right along the edge of the accordion. And then we'll fold that flap over and tie our pretty bow. So that's going to be it for our project today. If you can think of other fun, versatile ways to use this. Let me know in the comments. And you can also let me know if you are a coffee drinker and a book lover as I am. And if you are, what book are you currently reading? Okay, so that's all for my project. I really hope that you enjoyed this sort of non-traditional style scrapbook. If you did, let me know in the comments and give me a big thumbs up for this tutorial. Remember, you can find links for the printable in the description below, as well as links for all our socials. If you're not already, I would love for you to join my crafty little family. And as always, I'm wishing you a happy and productive day. And thank you so much for watching. Bye.